Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with a video using some clay molds. This is specifically for the Sweet Rose Journal and I'm sorry Evie, you're going to get another sneak peek but I just cannot help myself. Um, so we're going to be doing a mixed media cover for her Sweet Rose Journal. So I wanted to use this fantastic new mold that I got. Look at this. Is that just amazing? It's kind of like a cabbage rose almost, it looks like. I'm hoping that it's gonna work okay. It's got a lot of intricate details. I did try, um, per a, a suggestion by a viewer, to do hot glue, but my hot glue gun just is not powerful enough. It doesn't put out enough hot glue at one time to fill in even just this little leaf area. I was just like, no, this is not working. And uh, I don't think I'm going to do this today, but I am going to do the leaves and I am going to do the roses. And I, what I love about this one is that I like that they're connected. I think that's really, really pretty. And then I am going to also do some of these because I feel like I want to do something perhaps down the spine with um, these medallions. So that means that I'll be doing, I'll probably pick a pattern and do uh, maybe, um, so the, the journal is gonna measure, where's my ruler? Hold on guys. I believe the, the, the journal is gonna measure eight and a quarter high. So that means we would have to have, uh, we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, probably six, so maybe two, maybe pick three designs or two designs and three each or something, I'm not sure. We'll see on that, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> uh, sometimes this goes really, really easily and sometimes it does not. So the other thing I forgot to grab is some powder. So I am going to step away here in a moment after I chat with you and grab some powder. I believe that that helped me the last time I did this, if I remember correctly. I just don't have any in here, but let's talk about the clay first. I'm gonna be using the um, the DOS clay again, which I believe is the same clay that I used last time. I do keep it triple triple bagged, so it's in the this big bag with the, um, the paper clay, and then it's in two bags here. So um, that just keeps it from drying out. And so I'm just going to unwrap these really quick and we will get going. I'm going to step away right now and go grab some powder. I'll be right back. So I hope I don't get very sleepy because I've got some lavender and chamomile baby powder. So that's what we're going to use. I think in previous sessions where I've done this, that's been the, the clincher. I also got a little bit of water in this bowl because sometimes just getting your fingers wet a little bit helps. I'm gonna grab a couple of paper towels and get them ready as well, just for fingers and such. So, let's go ahead. I'm gonna move that for just a moment. And we're gonna need a fair amount of clay. Oh, this feels kind of wet. It's kind of unusual. Kind of unusual. And I'm, I'm putting the, the pattern closest to me. Um, so I'm thinking, that I do one rose at a time and then fill in the the thing is you don't want to break this so you want to have these all linked very very solidly so I think I'll start with that and just kind of get them um, connected to one of the roses so that when we pull the clay out we don't have a problem oh I forgot to use the powder goodness gracious <laughs> oh goodness that's a lot Oh, that's a lot. That's okay. It's probably going to be good. I should have probably just put some. I don't, it's a pretty big bottle, so it's kind of hard to control. I'm going to shake some of it out. We don't want a lot of it sitting in there, just a dusting. So let's try this again. Ooh, it smells like lavender. So here we go. So the water comes in handy when you start trying to pull this back a little bit uh, in terms of taking the excess clay off. So I'm just gonna get this all filled in with my, my uh, segments of clay here. And then we'll go from there. So I didn't wanna have that be in parts, so we're gonna have to really 
watch that piece there. Make sure that that leaf stays connected. Like so. Hopefully this is gonna go smoother than the last time. I had a hard time. But I just, uh, I normally get these off of Amazon or through scrapbook.com, these molds. But I was in my local, um, we have a store in town, in our small little town, that carries uh, antiques and art supplies and fabric and lace and all that kind of stuff. And they had a booth that was selling these. And I'm like, they're selling them for less than, than the store. So I went and gr grabbed this one. I'd never seen it before, so that was a win. Okay, so there we go. So usually, and I just, again, I wanna make sure that we've got a solid, solid connection here. It's, most of this is all one shape, um, other than the leaves can be a little bit fragile. So I'm gonna start pulling away the clay, and I just like to use my thumb and pull it away from me. Um, I mean, usually, I mean, try whatever works. Um, if you've never done this before, it can be uh, challenging but it's a lot of fun and the results are incredible. So I'm just gonna start pulling away that clay. I'm not worried about what's getting in this one next to it. It's not a problem. I always also try to examine my mold before I put clay in it because you wanna kinda get an idea of what it looks like before you start pulling away because you wanna know what areas you need to be cleaning up. So there I just dipping into some water and what that allows me to do is soften that a little bit and then I can start pulling it away. And I just kind of use the flat part of my finger. And hopefully this is going to work fine <laughs> using my palm apparently. Goodness gracious, this is tough. It's very warm here today. It's about 92 degrees, so that doesn't necessarily fare well with some art products, so I think I got too much there, so I'm just gonna dab up some of that moisture. Probably was premature with the water. So once you get start getting a sense of where your, your edges are, you can start pulling away. And then when this happens, it's pulling away from the mold here, so I'm just gonna push that back down. Always pushing down, making sure that you're filling in all the cavities in that in the mold. So I feel like I'm all thumbs today, so this isn't. So, and then sometimes it works just to kind of rub around like that. You see how I'm getting to the edge of that mold on this side? Like that. Got a little bit um, of a light layer there, so I'm just pushing that back down just to try to make sure that we've got good a good coverage there. Because if you br have br broken places within the mold, you're gonna have a hard time getting it out. Hopefully our pa baby powder is going to be super helpful there. So we're still really high centered here, so I'm just gonna keep pushing this down. I actually got this out, but I don't know that it's actually gonna really do anything for me. Let's try it. It's just kind of a, a rubber pallet kind of thing, plastic pallet. Okay, so I'm gonna start rolling, or rubbing rather. And when you st start to see it pull away from the edge, you kind of want to correct that. A little bit there that needs to stay in there. The funny thing is, is when you don't do this very often, it's, it's, uh, it's like a learning curve every time. And I don't do this very often at all. So again, just pulling off the excess. You don't want any of that. You want it to be flush with the with the at the top of the mold. So maybe if we just kind of pull into the 
inside of the mold we'll be able to get a little bit more idea of where our edges are. I tend to always put more clay than I need to and that's why I end up working probably harder than I than I need to getting this clay but you be, can begin to see where the edges really are just by rubbing. So there we're getting the edge of that leaf formation there. I'm just going to keep pushing that down because we've got some cracks. Goodness. I know I'm, I don't got the definition going on over here. I'm going to try some water now. And again, just a little bit because I don't want to, I don't want it to get slimy on me and not be able to work it. I'm trying to figure out that's an edge. I think I'm going to get a more powerful uh, glue gun because I would love to try this with hot glue. I've done it with um, resin but oh my goodness that is messy. It is really messy because it's really hard to keep everything clean. Okay so I'm just not seeing it here. Okay I'm going to start pulling in towards the center because I think I'm missing where the edges are. Thanks for bearing with me guys. I haven't done this in a while. But I would love to be able to do this for her journal. Make this fantastic mixed media cover. If you haven't seen the last journal I did with that kind of a cover, I did, I think it was for the Winter Garden Journal and it was epic. Like, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. Um, the cover was just, it had a gate and it had like an angel and oh, it was so beautiful if I do say so myself. Okay, so I just don't want any excess around these edges. Now, once it's dry, you do get a little bit of an opportunity to, um, you can scrape away and clean up the edges and you can use a little bit of a nail file even. I don't usually get too preoccupied with that because I paint these. What do we got? What do we got going on here? Oh, there's There we go. This is a very different uh, mold. I'm having a hard time finding the definition. And I really want to make sure it's nice and flat in those cabbage rose areas. So then the key to getting it out is you kind of have to, and I apologize if this is hard for you guys to see, you have to kind of ply it like this. You have to bend this and push because the, the rubber in here is softer, almost like you feel like you could put your finger through it. Did you hear that? This is going to be fantastic. Can you guys see? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Come on. Come on, baby. Come out and play. Come out and play. We want to see you on the front of a journal. Oh, this is gorgeous. I'm having trouble with this other row, so I'm just going to gently move it so I can focus on this edge. And I know that's hard for you guys to see. My apologies. Is tricky. So see how I'm moving my fingers behind it? That's kind of the key to getting this out. Sometimes you have to kind of reach in there and um, oh, mess up that leaf. Sometimes it's just doesn't, it's stubborn and it doesn't want to loosen. So I can kind of go, oh, it's tricky. Come on. Come on, Rose. You want to come out, don't you? Ah, this is so hard. I'm nervous too. There we go. There we go. Come on. Come on. 
as though my talking to it is going to do it right. I don't know if I should have had more powder. I'm going to try to kind of pull this a little bit as I bend. See if I can help it out a little bit. Oh, that's working. I'm doing kind of a rocking motion here. And that is helping me loosen this as I bend it. I'm not letting go of the rose that's in my hand. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. And I'm supporting the little leaves as they touch my fingers. I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose my grip. I don't want them to crash. Come on. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost there. Can't remember if there's a leaf on that end. There we go. There is our roses. Look at that. Look at that. I do want to do a little bit of cleaning up if I can. The tricky part is I don't really have any tools for this. I need to get some. So I'm just going to use this um, knife and hopefully not injure myself. And I'm just going to pull away some of these little bits that are just really obvious errors here in the mold before it dries. That's the biggest part. Oh, I don't want a hole there. Come on, don't do that. Um, I feel okay about the other, uh, the rest of it. I'm gonna try to um, trim that off a little bit. Got a little bit of an overhang there. And not cut myself. <laughs> so that is going to be absolutely gorgeous. Let me see if I can move this clay and show you this up close. I don't keep this clay that I've had in my hands because it doesn't uh, it doesn't set well. It doesn't it doesn't last well if it's been handled. So let me hold this up for you guys really quick. Look at that. Oh, we got a crack. We got cracks though. Now. Um, Obviously, if you weren't if you weren't going to paint this, or you were just going to like shellac it, or I don't know when you'd ever do that. You'd want to make sure that you didn't have all these cracks. But I am just rubbing them out a little bit while it's still wet, and I'm just going to be okay with what it is um, because it's going to be painted. So I'm just using my finger and just kind of smoothing out uh, what I can without damaging the design. So I think I did um, solve some of that cracking. Not all of it, but it is okay. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit so that I can work on the other. Um, I'm gonna see if I can move her just a little bit. Can we move you without breaking you? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so let's see if we can get some of the medallions done. So, uh, I mean, I've got the stuff out, I may as well do it. I'm really liking these discs, or the square ones rather, or should we do I don't want to do a really complex design. This is really pretty, but I like this too. Hmm. This is probably pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to do some. I'm going to make sure I do, um, I do three of each. So I'm going to do six total. I'm going to try anyway. I will abandon if this doesn't work. Um, let's, let's do this one. I like that one. I didn't put any powder in this. And the, the reason why is the smaller, the smaller the mold, the easier it is. Uh, and it's not, this isn't too intricate, intricate, so I shouldn't have any trouble. Uh, famous last words, right? Thought these would be fun down the spine. I'm going to do a hidden spine. Come on. Come on. Okay. Now I'm just trying to rub away to make clear that what's excess around the mold, as I was mentioning. Oh goodness. 
This doesn't look very clean at all. I'm going to probably speed up through part of this. I don't want to keep you guys too long. So let's pop this one out and see what we got. Probably should have used some powder because it's sticking pretty bad. This air has been exposed to the, uh, the clay has been exposed to the air because I did not cap it. So that one's not going to work. So let's try this again. Let's try again. I'm going to use a little bit of powder. I think I'm going to stick with these square ones over here. Um, I really don't want those crumbs in there though. Let's just do, um, let's do these two or these three and then we can decide what we want to use. So again, I'm going to, oh, I just spilled water all over the desk. Hold on. That little dish of water. It didn't spill on my rose though. So we're good. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm gonna just shake that out because I don't want that much. There we go. And I'm gonna toss that clay because it's been out in the air and exposed. So I know it seems wasteful, but the frustration of doing this with dry clay and crumbly clay is just not worth it to me. So I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm just, and again, I always have way too much. It's just my nature, I think. So I'm just gonna pull off the excess. I'll go let I'll go less on the next one. I think these ones were pretty easy when I did them the first time. This is a fairly new mold. Well, not very new, but I think I've only used it once. Okay. Yeah, this seems to be better. excess off. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this, guys. This is not working. I don't know if my clay got too warm sitting out here. Again, it is warm here. This one is very thin. I like it better than the ones I did before because it will work well as an embellishment in a journal. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, not bad. There we go. Let's keep that one. Let's keep that one. It's not perfect, but that's all right. Nothing is. So let's try this one. I'm gonna go in with a smaller ball here this time, see if I can do better. Um, I think I'll do, yeah, oh, I don't know. I'm just playing now. These are small and tricky. I cannot get this, there we go. There we go, I got that corner. So I'm gonna do one more of this shape, or this design, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
it's hard but again you know I mean if you're in for perfection you know this is this is challenging but I'm not you know as I say all the time I am NOT perfection is not important to me uh, that has not always been the case <laughs> maybe I'm just not push pressing hard enough whoops do not want to spill that water on my rose there we go let's just get this one out what I did notice is that the this mold that the wells are not as deep the mold is not as deep so it's a little bit uh, deceiving because it feels like you know you don't get any movement I don't know if you guys can see this but I'm not really getting any movement here but there's not much to be had because there's not much depth but this is not coming out let's see what we got going on here Karen eh? see how it's not even doing anything there we go there we got a little bit of separation from the mold let's try again I am not a quitter <laughs> never have been there we go come on come on baby we may have to call it a day you guys I think that the temperature here is having an effect on what I'm doing because it's not usually this difficult so I think we are going to go ahead and just um, say goodbye and just be okay with the um, the cabbage roll the cabbage rose molds if I get these out I will continue um, and I will see you in the next video thanks you guys Take care. Bye-bye.